this is a little different video. Um, you've probably seen or noticed in my videos that I have strike collars on my, my hatchet. So I got a new ax and it's a longer handle and I want to build a strike collar for that. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do it. If you've never done leather work before, it's, I hadn't done it before either. It's not super hard for this. Um, obviously it probably won't be the prettiest thing you ever made, but if you're doing it for yourself, then it's part of the process, right? So stick around. Okay, so there's a lot of videos on this, but um, there's actually a really good one by MCQ Bushcraft is where I learned how to do this. Um, you just need a piece of paper. This is a little thicker paper. It's from a REI um, credit card offer. So you'll take that in your ax. Okay, it's gonna be upside down for you guys, but it's okay, maybe, maybe I'll flip it. So this is just gonna be so that you can get your shape here because you don't want your leather, or I don't, want it to just go flush, right? I want it to kind of tuck up into the head so that it actually looks a little cleaner. You can trim all your leather down after. This is just to get our shape. So you want to get that good and snug up underneath so that it'll cover that wood, and you can kind of cut a little extra if you want to make sure that you have enough room. So get that on there. You want to make sure it's kind of snug on there, and then you can just take your finger and run it around and that's going to give you an indent so you'll see where you need to go for your indent on your leather so you're going to do that on both sides and it is windy out here tight again this is going to be kind of your template so then when you're done you'll kind of have your see the little dents there so that's how you can see where you're going to cut your leather so I'd already done this with mine. I decided to make a video, so I went back. Um, you're basically gonna put that on there and then take a knife. This is just a box cutter, not a great one. You're gonna put that on there. I took it and instead of putting it flush to the edge, I scooched it down just a little bit so I had a little more room to play with. And then you just trace around that. And your initial cuts don't have to go all the way through the leather because you're just trying to get those on there like that. So then my rough shape, like I said, you want to go a little bigger because you can always trim later, is I want it to be about this deep on the ax collar, right? Or on the, the uh, ax handle. So what we're going to do is just kind of box it out here. So I kind of do these at a little bit of an angle and I'll show you guys why. It'll probably take more trimming later. But mainly it's because of the way the handle is shaped. Since it comes down, so you're gonna want the leather to do that. You're gonna have too much as it comes down like this. So you can see here how when I cut this out, it's gonna fit up to there. And I don't have a workbench. You guys don't need a workbench. This is just a piece of wood that is on top of a toolbox that I have. It's not a proper workbench. So don't worry about that. You just don't want to do this on your kitchen counter or you might have issues later. So a sharper knife would do better. Take your time with this because obviously once you cut the material out, obviously you cannot go back and put it back in there. So I'm starting to get that broken open there. So I'm just making numerous cuts on this. Just going a little bit deeper, a little bit deeper every time to get that leather worked down. We're getting there. You don't have to have leather that's like nice leather either. You can uh, get an old leather jacket and try it. If you find one that like maybe a Goodwill store for next to nothing. Or you could do um, an old pair of boots. Go to a surplus store and see if they have an old pair of military boots that you can use. Because the boot leather is usually pretty strong too. That's something else that was mentioned in uh, MCQ Bushcraft's video. Was that he usually uses boot leather. So 
something to think about if you do not have access to a big piece of leather. So, all right, you guys don't need to watch me fight this. I'm gonna cut this out and then we'll get to the next step. We're back. So it's cut out. Obviously it is rough around the edges, right? It doesn't have a great look to it. It's okay though. What we can do later, and I'm gonna do it with a sharper knife, is actually go through and shave out the insides of these to clean it up, clean up any little little pieces. And then the shape's not perfect either, so we can clean that up as well. Get some of these rougher, rougher edges sliced off here. It'll focus. Um, something else you can do too is take a knife and it helps, I did it on my other one, and I'm gonna use a sharper knife when I do it because this one sucks, um, but you actually trim off that inside edge, so at kind of an angle here, and it'll help this sit more flush to the ax and on the handle, so what we're gonna do now is you just wanna soak this, just take it and stick it in a cup of warm water for, I don't know, five, 10 minutes. What that's gonna do is make this a lot more pliable so that you can use it, and then whenever you put it on there and tie it on, as it dries, it'll tighten the leather. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Got our leather soaking in a shaker cup. So it's gonna be a little moist. I'll show you what soaking it does. So see now that it's soaked, that leather's a lot more pliable. So then you can start forming it. So like I said, you wanna take a knife a sharp knife. It's just a little pocket knife and start shaving down the inside edges here. Take your time with this. Um, obviously there's no rush because if you screw it up, you've already come this far. You don't want to have to start over. So I just shave off that inside edge blade every now and then because wet leather is going to stick but it starts to take that edge off of there it's not much it's just going to help with that to sit flush you don't want to make the cut deeper on the whole arc of it you're just trying to get the inside edge there you probably don't have to do this but it, I think it makes it look cleaner when you're done I also noticed on mine, when I went to test fit it, that, hang on, I'm trying to rub my belly and pat my head at the same time here. Um, when I went to test fit it, that I had too much material, which is what I said earlier, like you want to have too much than too little because you can always take leather off, but you can't put it back on. I would suggest doing this outside where you're gonna make a mess. I've done stuff like this on my coffee table and you just gotta clean it up. So once you get that going, get the edges cleaned up. I don't usually trim the bottom down on that inside lip um, just because I'm not super worried about how that sits on there. I just wanna clean up all the edges. see one side's a little higher than the other as well so you can probably take a little just a little bit off of there so mine was a little high here uh, put the axe out here it was kind of buttoned up there see how it's it's folding so I want it to go all the way up there but I don't want it to make issues with trying to get this fitted so I'm gonna take a little bit off the top I'm just gonna do a little thin, flat sliver. So I'm gonna take too much off. Out of my garage floor. <laughs> okay. So, when you get ready to fit, what you're gonna wanna do is rub some wax on here, whether it's candle wax or beeswax, or I think I, I actually used some paraffin wax that you can wax canvas with. Any wax will work though. It's gonna help waterproof that just in case you have something underneath it. So you wanna get it snug on there. 
and how the edges are coming up. You can tuck those in later because the leather's wet, so it'll let you kind of manipulate it and rub it into it. So I think we get a good fit up by our head here for the most part. Kind of test fit in that. You just want to make sure everything's the way you want it. And on the back, it's not bad. We kind of want a gap because the lace is going to take up some room. So I'm going to actually take off some of this because I want a bigger gap. I've got too much coming together there. So I'm going to go at the angle, like I said earlier. And I'm sure that this is uh, dulling this knife a little bit, but that's why it's good to know how to sharpen them. Remember, it's not, you don't have to cut super deep or hard. You just want to get just a little bit off the edge. But actually made a straighter cut than the last time. So I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. Just take a little bit more off. I'm trying to get it where you guys can see it and not screw it up at the same time. Yeah, I got off track there. Got my score. Nope, not quite. Okay. So that should fit a little bit better. You can always re-soak this leather too if it starts to dry out and it's getting a little tough to work with. This seems like it could probably stand to be soaked a little more. You can take little bits off. I might take a little off of here so it'll fit more flush. So once it's lined up, see we got that gap, but when we put the leather lace in there, it'll fill it. If you don't have a gap and the leather comes together, it'll be hard to get it tight and that's gonna to wanna to move around. The wax underneath here that I talked about will help. That's the idea. So once you get so. the shape that you want for the most part, you can always take it off and trim later. I have a leather hole punch here. If you don't have one of these, I didn't the first time I made this. I've got it afterwards to make other stuff. Um, I actually used in my toolbox, like an awl, like either an awl or this an awl, but um, just to poke the holes in it, and then I would kind of ream those out a little bit to fit my lacing. Okay. So this is leather cordage. This You can buy this at Hobby Lobby and buy a bag for like six bucks for like three pounds of it. You can use 550 cord as well. Um, I like the leather because it has that more kind of traditional look to it once it's all said and done. But let me get that out of the way here. You can soak that in water as well to help make that more pliable. Get the ax out of the way. So I'm show you guys. So what I'm gonna do is I wanna punch my holes down the sides to stitch this. So I don't want a huge hole. I want it just enough because I just wanna be able to get that lace through there. I don't want it to stretch out later and look like crap. So what we're gonna do here is use I can turn this thing. Now that may make it a little harder to get stuff through there, but it'll keep it from looking like crap later. So these aren't too far from the edge here. I'll punch that hole through there. Got my holes punched out here. I still feel like I did too many on this one. Maybe it's just a thing with me. I don't know. Um, it'll work though, right? And I can always make another one later. But I'm not a leather worker, so that's okay. And if you guys screw it up, that's okay too, because this is part of the part of the fun of learning it. So we got our first round through there. You want to try to keep these even, uh, your tails off at each each side here, because you're going to be weaving back and forth. <clears throat> so. 
once you have that through there, you take your end there and fold it across. And then you're gonna come back behind here. So it's gonna go across and then back in and behind here. So you're basically, you're gonna make your stitching down. So you don't want this too snug, right? Cause you gotta get your, your ax in there, obviously. But as you go through, you wanna try to keep the, all this from twisting too much so that it's gonna lay flat, more flat, flat hair against the thing. So then there's that one, so that one came through. So we're gonna take our other side. We wanna come back across and it's gonna come back in down here. It's funny when you do stuff on camera, I've learned this doing my camping, that things don't go as well and you forget about the outtakes. Okay, so that's kind of flat how we want it. So see, it's starting to do our cross pattern there. It's loose, and so now it's not gonna look great, but it'll start to come together. So you're just gonna keep going back and forth through that and leaving it loose so that you're gonna be able to get it on your X. Looks like crap, because it's all loosey-goosey. We're gonna snug all that up, and it's gonna be kind of like lacing a new pair of shoes tight. So you're just gonna have to eat, pull each piece out and this is kind of a pain in the butt i used pliers last time but when you pull don't pull towards your face i hit myself in the face it happens i'm blocking my eye a little bit so then you got your axe you are going to feed that onto the bottom slide that bad boy up there Ooh, in a tight space here so see how that's starting to come together so that's up there so then you're gonna start going through and tightening all these so to give it a more of an aged look I'll take a permanent marker and just color in the leather there that wax on the handle really makes a big difference on how that grips this is another uh, take your time thing so that you don't color Things you're not supposed to color. Just a little darker around the edges. It doesn't seat perfectly as you see. Um, but I think it's cool, it's something you can do. I would probably suggest doing this before you put it on here, like tie it on here, because then you don't have to worry about coloring things that you shouldn't. Um, but yeah, I like how it turned out. I'm gonna wet that a little bit. Kind of push. Normally I wouldn't condone doing anything with an ax other than cutting stuff with the face off of it, but you kind of have to, or this won't fit right because that's gonna get in the way. So you gotta take it off of there. Hey, oh, hit the camera. So what I'm doing is just using the back of this marker or the edge of this marker to try to roll those edges in. I'm gonna wet this end here a little bit. Try to roll those up into place to make it look a little better. So, for the back, once we're done, you can always retie this. I might. It's starting to bother me now. Mm-hmm. OCD. Much. So we're going to take, here's my knife. The sharp knife we use to carve everything off initially. I don't want to tie these, tie these, because I want them to be able to come apart if I need to redo this. So I'm just going to kind of turn the blade in a little bit and just go down just enough. I don't want to cut into my handle to where I can take those off of there. Get out of the way. Close my knife. Bam, there you go. So then we got our overstrike collar. They actually look better with a little age on them. So that's it guys. 
Not a crazy hard project. It doesn't look perfect, but I think it looks good. I like it. Um, and it's something you did at home. So if you have kids or something too, you could teach them maybe better than the Xbox. Yeah, it'll work. You can always clean it up later. If you want to take it off, you can take it off because you know how it went on there. So that doesn't look great, but I'm telling you it'll wear in. 